We've talked now about the design of the fly-by-wire. Now let's talk a little bit about how to utilize it, starting with the side stick. As I mentioned before, it is not imperative that you understand fully how this fly-by-wire system works right now, but it should give you an insight into how it operates so as to somewhat understand the difference between a conventional aircraft and the fly-by-wire. Let's take a scenario right here where we look at the utilization, the working principle of changing the vertical trajectory. It means putting the aircraft into a climb. I have down here the illustration of the side stick inside the cockpit. I have up here an illustration of the aircraft as it goes from a straight and level climb to straight and level again. And then I have here in the middle a a bar that shows the change in G load for that vertical maneuver. Because that's the thing about the fly by wire. In pitch, it doesn't command how much deflection is required. It demands a G load maneuver. So if you take your side stick and gently move it back, you're asking for a G load maneuver that might be 1.2, 1.4. Remember that a 1G environment is what we experience every day, so that's no change. 1.4 means a slight change. Up to 2.5, which will be a side stick deflection as fast as you can. So maximum deflection, making the aircraft go into that climb at the highest rate that it can. On this little bar here, I have illustrated with a green line the change in G-load as we ask for the maneuver. So first of all, we're going to put the aircraft into a climb. I'm going to take my side stick, which is in this case in the neutral position. In neutral, the aircraft uses auto stability and auto trim to fly the aircraft straight and level, unaccelerated, with hands off. I want to put the aircraft into, let's say, a 10 degrees nose up attitude, nose up climb. So I'll take my side stick and I'll gently move it backwards. As I'm applying the pressure backwards, I am commanding a G load. And as the side stick moves backwards, the aircraft is going to start to change its trajectory. I'm raising the nose by moving the elevator. I'm asking for a maneuver right here. Maybe it's 1.8. It's a nice, gentle maneuver. As long as I'm holding the side stick deflected, I will be asking for that G load, which means the aircraft will keep the elevator deflected and the aircraft nose will keep rising, rising, rising. Once I have the 10 degrees nose up that I want, I will let go of the side stick back to neutral. And the aircraft will now go back to, again, a zero, correction, a 1G neutral environment. Now the aircraft is climbing here and it is climbing at a 1G maneuver, the elevator remains deflected as needed to, to maintain that maneuver. As long as I have a side stick neutral, the aircraft will maintain 10 degrees nose up. When I want the aircraft to level off and change its trajectory again, I will do the opposite. In this case, move the side stick slightly forward, asking for a negative G-load maneuver. The aircraft will then change its trajectory to put the nose on the horizon. Once it's on the horizon, I will then let go of the side stick. This operation here of the side stick allows the aircraft to maintain whatever trajectory you have told it until you tell it something else. That is the auto stability and auto trim. In a conventional aircraft, if you were to take your control, put the nose up 10 degrees and then trim the aircraft and then leave it hands off, the aircraft will start climbing, but as a function of performance and reduced density and performance at high altitude, the nose will slightly start to drop from the 10 degrees unless you start to put in more back pressure, return the aircraft. But in our aircraft, that's not the case. You have asked for that maneuver, that attitude, the aircraft will continue to climb. And while it will need more deflection on the elevator, to maintain that maneuver at high altitude. Well, that is the job of the flight control computer, not the pilot. 
So as the aircraft is climbing, the flight control computer will be asking for more and more and more deflection to maintain that 10 degrees. But for us, we just keep a neutral input. And then the lateral. The aircraft uses the same type of principle in the lateral, so when rolling the aircraft. However, we don't ask for a load demand when rolling the aircraft. We ask for a rate of roll. The rate of roll is how fast the aircraft is rolling. The lateral trajectory is accomplished by moving the side stick left and right. And again, within the limitations for the aircraft. It is not possible to roll the aircraft more than 67 degrees on either side. As you can see here, that's the bank limit. And within the normal bank operational limit here, we have automatic turn coordination. What does turn coordination mean again? Turn coordination from your ATPL theory on principles of flight is flying with a coordinated aircraft, meaning inputs to both the rudder and ailerons for coordinated turn to prevent slipping and skidding. We don't give any inputs to the rudder because of the flyby wire. When we give an input in to roll the aircraft, signals are sent to the roll control surfaces, spoilers and ailerons, to roll the aircraft. But simultaneously, the flight augmentation computers, the fact, send signals to the rudder to coordinate the turn. The two work together to create a coordinated turn within the full operational band of the roll. Inputs on the rudder is only required by the pilots during takeoff and landing for crosswind and in case of engine failure to zero out the side stick. In all other cases, feet on the floor, no inputs on the rudder. When operating with normal bank angle, when we say up to 33 degrees is normal bank angle, anything above 33 degrees of bank is a steep turn and that's not used in normal operation. So automatic pitch trim is provided within this band. Automatic pitch trim is the ability of the aircraft to again coordinate multiple flight control surfaces. So when I roll the aircraft, we are used to the aircraft once the vertical component of lift starts to go horizontal during a turn, the aircraft starts to lose altitude because the pitch of the aircraft slightly reduces. What do we do as pilots? We normally apply back pressure in a turn. You have learned that through your basic flying training. But in an Airbus fly-by-wire aircraft, that's not required. It is done, but it's not required. It is done by the flight control computers. So when we roll left or right, the aircraft will roll into the turn and simultaneously to the roll control surfaces deflecting, will send a command to the elevator or the THS to reposition to account for that vertical component of list lift change. This is the automatic function of the pitch trim. So if I roll into a turn, I can make the aircraft sit and do perfect donuts in a 360 degree turn without losing a single foot of altitude if I don't put in any changes to the pitch on the side.